All I said was things were better under Trump. I mean, it were, weren't they? I guess I won't run out of corn now. I've discovered Vice Australia is still a thing. Though I was worried for a while that Vice is gone, and I quite like the crazy far-left mindset. I'd like to understand what's going on in their noodles. And good to know that at least the crazy Australian Vice people are still publishing anyway. They're wondering what all this cancel culture thing is. What is it? <laughs> Does it exist? Is it a real thing or is it all made up by those nasty far-right extremists? Would be my guess. Anyway, this article on Vice, written by somebody called Madeleine LeBooth. What is cancel culture? And what does it mean in 2024? It's quite an old boot thing now, really, cancel culture. If you're still wondering what it is, perhaps you need to pay more attention. What does it mean to cancel someone or something? Here we define cancelled, provide examples and look at how its outset has changed over time. Cancel culture as a concept has swept the globe in recent years. Though born from a specific social activist group, it has exploded into the mainstream. It was the Australian Macquarie Dictionary's Word of the Year in 2019, and was also on the shortlist for Word of the Decade in 2021. But since at least 2020, it's been deployed by conservatives as a catchy phrase to incite outrage alongside other lefty agendas like political correctness or wokeness. Ah, are you worried that this term may be turned against you? Yes, if you're losing control of the narrative, perhaps you might experience some cancelling of your own. Not that I wish that upon anyone. I've had my own fair share of cancelling. <laughs> I've enjoyed quite a bit of it. But what is cancel culture? And what does it mean to cancel someone or something? And is cancel culture a myth anyway? <laughs> is it a myth? What is cancel culture? You might be wondering how to define cancelled. Let's start with Marquerie's dictionary definition of cancel culture. The attitudes within a community which call for or bring about the withdrawal of support from a public figure, such as cancellation of an acting role, a ban on playing an artist's music, removal from social media, etc., usually in response to an accusation of a socially unacceptable action or comment. In other words, cancel culture is the act of collectively boycotting something or someone after a perceived wrongdoing. The act of getting cancelled is enabled by social media. There's a misunderstanding there. Being cancelled is not about a collective decision. It's usually from some big tech company forcing you out of their algorithms, forcing you into either purgatory, so you're in some kind of shadow ban scenario when no one can actually see what you're saying, or being kicked off a platform altogether. It's not coming from some kind of collective gunning. Despite how Macquarie defines cancelled or cancelled culture, cancelling isn't just targeted at public figures. Any person, brand or thing can be cancelled. Author and academic Eve N.G. points out in her definition of the term, in cancel culture, a critical analysis, N.G. defines cancelling and cancel culture as both the practice of cancelling someone, an individual group, organization, brand, or even nation, yes, they've tried that with Russia, and the surrounding commentary about their wrongdoing. This means cancelling someone is less like hitting backspace and deleting their name from the page, and more like striking through the name and continuing to write about it alongside other people. Well, you know, tell that to the people who've been kicked off Twitter, who don't have a voice anymore. Or the people who have been throttled so much that no one can hear them, such as myself. What are some cancel culture examples? Some early cancel culture examples can be traced back to what Clyde McGrady from the Washington Post defined as the first usage of cancel in today's understanding. The lyrics of Cheek's song Your Love Is Cancelled off their 1981 album Take It Off is a sparse track punctuated by slap bass and an undeniably 80s flute synth where Nile Rogers sings the titular phrase and gives birth to the metaphor that would culturally peak decades later. Ten years later, the word cancel emerges again in a film that boasts an all-star cast including Ice-T and Chris Rock, who had his own brush with cancel culture. In New York City, rising drug lord Nino Brown played by Wesley Snipes, yells, cancel that bitch, after a fight with his girlfriend. 
the same phrase and scene are directly referenced in 50 Cent's 2005 song Hustler's Ambition and Lil Wayne's 2009 track I'm Single, securing its existence in the cultural unconscious. When the idea of cancelling re-emerges years later, the misogynistic undertones of these earlier contexts are repressed. Oh dear, they're misogynistic. Why? Because they're uttered by men. The origins of cancel culture. But when did cancel culture start? Cancel culture manifested itself into the online term we know and understand now heavily because of social media. Social media was crucial in enabling cancel culture to develop specifically the online realm of black Twitter, a space for both serious conversation about matters that affect black communities, but also a space for humor and entertainment by and for collective black identities. What do you mean by collective identity? You're not talking about individual people. There, the idea of cancelling, adapting older traditions of dissing and calling out, started alongside hashtag movements like Me Too and Black Lives Matter, which helped spread the action and language of cancel culture further. It's clear that the verb to cancel, like the history of other words like woke, cool, and on fleek, originated in black culture, but has been appropriated into white mainstream culture globally. Uh, no, I think woke has been in the dictionary for quite a while. I think that's been sitting in our dictionaries for hundreds of years. <laughs> I don't think that's an exclusive black thing. This is why it's particularly interesting that a phrase like cancel culture can be awarded word of the year from Australia's authority on our version of English, without clear reference to its origins. But as McGrady points out, the notion of cancel culture has now been weaponized to sneer at the values of many young black liberals who were integral to the concept coming into popular circulation. So they're tracing the roots of cancel culture back to those specific instances where it was used in rap videos, rap songs. Okay. Well, the words cancel and culture are not new, so the combination of cancel culture is not something you can copyright. And also, who cares where it comes from? It's being used now. This is the problem that a lot of these funny liberals have. They get obsessed with the origins of meanings and the origins of things, instead of actually focusing on how those things interact and work in daily life. I mean, honestly, who cares where cancel culture as a term comes from? I care more about how it's used. The evolution of cancel culture on social media. After decades of sexual abuse allegations, the hashtag Mute R. Kelly led to a successful financial boycott of the now convicted musician, who was handed a 20-year prison sentence for child pornography earlier this year. Other examples include Woody Allen, Louis C.K. and Kevin Spacey, who at various times were cancelled by various groups over abuse allegations. Well, you shouldn't be cancelled for an allegation. This is the problem with this wonderful cancel culture. It's actually punishing people for allegations instead of actual punishment doled out through legitimate legal processes. And Pepsi was cancelled after the ad featuring Kendall Jenner was condemned for appropriating a Black Lives Matter protest. Ah, another thing I don't care about. But it's not just happening in the United States. K-pop group BTS were cancelled by Chinese fans over a comment by a band member paying tribute to American and South Korean troops who fought in the Korean War. You also don't have to be alive to be cancelled. For many, Picasso is cancelled and debates continue on whether Michael Jackson is cancelled. Well, he's, his estate's worth quite a lot, so no, not really. <laughs> In Australia, more recently, the student groups at the University of Melbourne have asked for Philosophy Academy Molly Lawford Smith's classes to literally be cancelled in a campaign on campus and online that led to debate over academic free speech. Uh, I don't know, should we cancel these activists, maybe? Should we do that? Just let people do what they want, maybe. Cancel culture v's free speech. Cancel culture has fraught relationship with free speech. Some argue that cancelling gives rise to the voices of marginalized communities who have previously had their opinions suppressed. Others say it stifles open debate. You're trying to justify silencing people so that other people who you prefer get to have a say. That's a pretty shitty thing to suggest there. I've already forgotten your name, but I'm not liking you so much at the moment, which is pretty on par with most advice. Thank you very much for coming back into my life.
The examples listed above suggest there isn't a specific way to cancel something. The effects of cancel culture are often quite disparate. Different groups of people may consider someone to be cancelled when others do not. There doesn't appear to be a one-size-fits-all to cancelling. While some consider cancel culture as an act of free speech, well, they would be wazics. That's not free speech to harass people into silence, or actually to harass corporations that have the ability to silence other people into silencing other people. That's a real shitty thing to do. Conservatives have identified cancelling as a threat to free speech. In response, the US Conservative Political Action Conference in 2021 focused on the theme America Uncancelled. It's a phrase that's been plastered on t-shirts ever since. Is cancel culture just call-out culture? While it may seem that cancel culture and call-out culture align with the same purpose, both concepts differ in resolution. Call-out culture has more of a direct focus on education and progress provided the person being called out has the desire to grow and learn from their wrongdoings or mistakes. You're assuming that your opinion on what is and isn't right should be taken as gospel, and that you should be able to wield some kind of banhammer. You sound like a right little fascist here. Anyone can be called out, and by doing so, anyone can learn to educate themselves and or change their perspective for the better, says this alleged little miniature fascist. Cancel culture aims to rid the person on the receiving end of any kind of redemption. So while the two are similar, keep in mind that they both come to different conclusions. And if you're going to cancel or call someone out, remember what you want from it. So the difference here basically is if the person says, no, fuck you, I'm not going to apologize for having an opinion, then they're cancelled. But if they say, oh, I'm so sorry, yes, I'm going to kiss your sphincter because you're going to cancel me, that becomes a call out. Yes? Is that what this is? You little fascist? Allegedly. Negative effects of cancel culture. According to Refocus AU, cancel culture can have definitive effects on the mental health of the person being cancelled because of its ability to socially exclude and alienate, and also destroy their ability to make money. These feelings of isolation then potentially lead to depression and anxiety and even exacerbate existing mental health conditions. A sense of shame may also be felt by the cancelled person if they are concerned over what people think or are dealing with consequences of their actions and therefore facing a backlash for it. But the cancelled are not the only party affected by cancel culture. Uh-huh. Are you also the victim? Because you've had to cancel someone you feel so dreadful. The canceller also faces mental health challenges when they accept a fleeting sense of hope and justice as redemption from the cancelled. If the cancel party doubles down on their opinion or continues to defend themselves from the backlash, this could compromise the sense of hope the cancellor holds and may make them feel like their work and effort wasn't effective. Or perhaps they shouldn't be such a little wazzic and stop bullying people, maybe. This may result in feelings of self-doubt and helplessness. Well, you should feel self-doubt if you're going to be trying to bully people into silence. What an awful thing to do. Carlo University asked counsellors about how to protect your mental health from cancel culture and found that the best solution is to unplug from social media. Apologise, refrain from posting online when feeling emotional, consider the feelings of others and talk to others about your feelings. Ah, like a struggle session. You feel the pain, you go through the denial and the angst and you come out the other end all apologetic and cooked. A gradual sense of acceptance and forgiveness should develop thereafter. And sooner, rather than later, you'll be rid from the torturing dread that follows you. Hopefully. No one is ever truly safe from the mental anguish of cancel culture. No matter where you sit on the cancellation scale, you are still vulnerable to the repercussions of it. And it's important to look out for yourself if you're in deep. The controversy is surrounding cancel culture. Many find cancel culture problematic in itself and may wonder why or how cancel culture is or can be toxic. Cancelling is one way social media was used to establish social justice. But the idea of media or activists playing a role in delivering justice isn't anything new. Well, I think you're finding a lot of uh, activists are uh, forcing from the other direction now. Let's hope we maintain some kind of reasonable middle ground. Because these people, the people who seem to be speaking through vice, are very much from the very far left. And anybody who speaks out against their 
beloved gender ideology and racial ideology must be silenced. Concerns have been raised about the effects of cancel culture on everyday citizens who aren't as well resourced or powerful as high profile people. At the same time, cancel culture has brought a significant attention to the shortcomings of the legal justice system, particularly in relation to cases of sexual assault. Like any social phenomenon, cancel culture is complex and has been interpreted and deployed in many, many ways. Cancel culture in Australia? Australian society has seen engaged in its fair share of cancellations and cancel culture in recent years as social media becomes the birthing ground for holding people accountable. One particular case, which has proven to be somewhat long-winded, is the cancellation of Australian band Sticky Fingers. The band's frontman, Dylan Frost, was called out online in 2016 by the lead member of First Nations hardcore punk band Dispossessed for complacent behavior and shirt fronting at one of their gigs. Shirt fronting. Frost would be accused of violence in the same year after indigenous singer Thelma Plum made an online statement detailing an altercation she had with a band member. This is another uh, assumption here that the feelings of people who are classified as indigenous should somehow be held up as sacred. And if you, if you smite them in any way, then there's something wrong with you. We're all just people. All just people trying to get along. Many of the band's attempts to rectify the situation wouldn't suffice. And the band would essentially face pushback from radio stations and be removed or blackballed from festival lineups. While acts of cancelling are quite obvious throughout Australian society and culture, many believe that there is a double standard. There have been countless celebrities or public figures who have gone on to be cancelled. However, the effects of their cancellation aren't as felt as people expected. Like when Sonia Kruger called for an end to Muslim migration because she wants to feel safe. Or Samantha Armitage said, good on her, to one twin on live TV for having lighter coloured hair and eyes as opposed to her darker haired skin twin. Even all-round awful politician Pauline Hanson has been cancelled multiple times for her often racist and xenophobic views. I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but I am very careful what I put into my body and I've felt that I've kept pretty good health all my life and I intend to keep it that way. And I don't intend to listen to bureaucrats or politicians or UN or the WHO pushing their own agenda and take away my freedoms, my rights, my choices, and that's why I'm fighting this issue. But she still has a backing because, well, we live in Australia. And what's the implication there? That you would rather not live in Australia? That you would rather not have laws that respect freedom of speech? Is that what you're saying there? I wonder if you classify yourself as an anti-fascist and yet you say stuff like this. It's perplexing. So while the effects of cancel culture are most certainly felt, the length at which people remain cancelled works on a case-by-case -case basis. Yes, it's based upon whether people care or not. But does cancel culture even exist? Well, you know, speak to the people who've been cancelled, you know? I've got over 11,000 followers on Twitter, and I hardly get any engagement at the moment. There were times after Elon Musk purchased Twitter when I was getting hundreds of responses to my posts on Twitter, and I think that perhaps was more of a baseline of what an account of my size should be getting. But now I'm lucky if I get 10. <laughs> so I'm definitely throttled. And I've not ever been given a reason why. I've never received any significant strikes. No emails notifying me of the limitations of my account either. Nothing. But I can clearly tell that I am. And I've also paid for a blue check mark, which is curious because when I purchased my blue check mark, it quite clearly said I would experience elevated uh, exposure. And that hasn't happened. So it's a little bit of a false advertising there. I know there's one chap, quite memes. One of the uh, Dilly Mean Team chaps who was recently complaining about constantly getting logged out of his Twitter account and having to go through lots of protracted capture identification processes to get back into his account. I've not experienced that in a while. I have in the past had conversations with people on Twitter and spontaneously been logged out. Heated conversations. So whoever I was talking to obviously had some admin controls and they would log me out <laughs> mid-conversation. And I'd come back, I'd log back in, and I'd, I'd continue the conversation, and I'd get kicked out again. So there was somebody behind the scenes with elevated privileges messing with people. I think that culture 
has started to seep back into Twitter. I, I saw a post earlier on today from Elon Musk himself that got restricted. So I'm not exactly sure who's in control of Twitter at the moment. I'd hope that Elon would have some say, but I'm not sure anymore. Anyway, I'm still on there. If you fancy, you can go and put a good word in there for me, maybe. Write a message to at support with the hashtag shushpiggy. <laughs> Free the pig, maybe. The version of cancel culture that conservative factions of society decry isn't real. Ah, oh, of course. Don't pay attention to those conservatives. Whatever they say isn't real. Yes, people are called out for their questionable actions all the time. But a person is only truly cancelled if they face consequences, be they social and or financial, or within the justice system. Well, none of these things should happen unless there's an actual law that's being broken in a legitimate legal process. So if people's ability to make a living is being damaged because of some of these outrageous activist groups, then I would say that that is an assault on your character and they should be held accountable for that. I think they are breaking the law by forcing these companies to cancel people. That's my opinion. But what we see time and time again, that people's reputations and livelihoods remain firmly intact even after their wrongdoings are exposed. Well, you really are a Puritan, aren't you? Their wrongdoings. What are these wrongdoings? Do they not hold up the, the requisite Black Lives Matter fist in the air? Do they not put their pronouns in their bio? Did they misgender someone? Did they forget that they changed their name? Or perhaps they didn't care? These are all opinions that certainly shouldn't result in somebody's ability to make a living get damaged. This little alleged fascist that wrote this, Madeleine Labouf, would probably disagree. I bet she'd quite like to cancel me, although, love, I'm already very cancelled, so you'd have to try quite hard to cancel me some more. People and groups can and often are called out, yet they remain protected by the structures of our society. Like the patriarchy! <laughs> Enough to hold on to their high-profile jobs or keep getting booked for gigs. Without being held accountable, is someone really cancelled? Ah. Well, Madeleine Leboeuf seems like a right social justice wrong -un. And there was a wonderful article about why Madeleine's beliefs are supreme. She's a woke supremacist. And if you don't agree with her, you should be cancelled. So there you go. Live by her rules or, uh, or be shush. Pigwig out! <coughs> Mm-hmm.